right, boys and girls, your friend Pee Wee has been on a new adventure, which is why it's time to buy the new improved Pee Wee doll. <laughs> <laughs> even anatomically correct. That's right. Just like Fu Manchu. The new Pee Wee doll is a master of disguise. Not only that. <laughs> the new Pee Wee doll comes with Turbo Fest. So new Pee Wee can be this drum. Most anything except a bum rap. <laughs> so hurry on down to your local toy store and pick up the new Pee Wee doll today. <laughs> <laughs> As always, pull my string and I'll talk. I have the right to an attorney. I have the right to remain silent. And what if I did some charity work instead? <laughs> yes, it's the new and improved Pee Wee doll from Sleezo. Pee Wee's born house, trench coat, handcuffs, and bail bonds sold separately. How you living? What? How you living? What? How you living? How you living? In living color. Good to have you here on our first show. Thank you for joining us. Got, got a lot of, lot of new stuff. A lot of new stuff. Got a new set. You likes? Got some new gear. You likes? <laughs> got a couple other new things I think you're going to like. First of all, we have a new fly girl coming all the way from Bronx, New York, Miss Jennifer Lopez. Some new additions to the cast I'd like to bring out right now before we get the show started. Come on out here, y'all. Now, the first one. <laughs> the first one is a is an old face, a little something new, formerly known as SW1. Sean Way is now joining the cast officially. Very funny, very funny stand-up comedian, actor Steve Parks joining us. Country bumpkin right here from Texas. Very funny stand-up comedian, Jamie Fox. Oh, oh. Now, now, Sean is now in the cast, so replacing him, another homeboy from the Bronx, DJ Twist in the house.
Y'all sit still and let us do what we do best. We'll be right back. Peace. Rick James at his super freakiest, super creepiest ever in Misery 2. It's been a lot of fun, Mr. James, but uh, it's getting late, and seeing as the party's been over for a couple of days, don't you think I could leave? Ah, but I got a new party happening, baby, and it's in my pants. <laughs> don't you want to be there? No, no, really, you're too kind, but I should be going. What? What's the matter? Oh, oh poop. Goodness gracious, look what you made me do. Hey, Mr. Betsy. What a dirty mess. I'm such a dirty birdie, dirty birdie. Please, Mr. James, untie me. I want to go now. I can't believe this. After all I've done for you, cooking, cleaning, let you suck face with my girlfriend when I watch, and this is all the thanks I get, Ew, Mr. James, the ropes are too tight. Ew, my hands are falling asleep. Ah, oh, I need a band-aid. Oh, Mr. James, please. No more night tricks. Oh, who you think you're talking to your new way, freight? Uh, did I ever tell you what a really big fan of your music I am? Bigger than Tina Marie? Oh, yes, much, much bigger. You know, I just love what MC Hammer did with your super freak. Did you say MC Hammer? MC Hammer and nothing but a big stinky pants do it. And nothing but a dinky. A farmer new pocket dinky. I hate MC Hammer. You love MC Hammer? Well, why don't you just marry MC Hammer, Mrs. Woman? Let me tell you something else, smell the bottoms. I know something you don't know. MC Hammer got cooties. Now, I don't think I need to be around you for a while. Rodney King was way out of line. 
You did it, homie! You totally sold out. I can come eat the man. himself. Oh, fey white devil crack. Hey, that's enough. We've got big plans for you, homie. But before we can have you become an official member of the establishment, it is customary to kiss the ring of the man. Excuse me a second. master plan just to bop the man. Kiss this. You fool. You don't know what you've done. Oh, yes, I do. I just got even with your ass. diamond back from Johnny Peluso tonight. Hey, why do I always have to wear the disguise? Because you're the best. You're the master, head. I mean, who's the department gonna get? Me? Think I could have pulled off that little circus number you did last month? Remember that? Yeah. It was great until the elephant mistook me for a giant goober and tried to eat me. Hey. I can't do it alone. We're partners, remember? Okay. As long as I don't have to look silly. Head, trust me. <clears throat> Excuse me, reservation for a doctor and Mrs. Reynolds? Dr. Reynolds. 
table for one and a quarter. Well, big boy, are you gonna seat us? Or are you gonna spend all night staring at my little old bazookas? No, 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 no. For you, I got our best table. Right next to Mr. Pelusa. Follow me. That's Peluso. Now, look, I'm going to get the diamond. Go ahead. I'll keep his bodyguards busy. Good luck, partner. Uh, Mr. Peluso, I'm Dr. Reynolds. Have a seat. <laughs> Either that's your wife or your bowling ball is gay. Look, I'm not here to chat. I'm here to buy a diamond. Boys, boys, please don't fight over little old me. <laughs> you a Capricorn, ain't you? Hey, baby, why don't you let me buy you something? I bet you like hats. Mama, you're just like all the rest. You wind me and dine me, then roll me off the back door. <laughs> you're the finest little thing up in here. Would you like to dance? With you, handsome, I'd love you, too. This is beautiful. Tell me, Peluso, how'd you get this through customs? There's one orifice on the body they never check. <laughs> Think about it, please. Hey, you know what? You're a pretty good dancer. Why, well, thank you. But I bet you say that to all the heads. <laughs> Oh, my! Is that a gun in your pocket for you, Pee Wee Herman? <laughs> oh! It's hey, Bob, look! See you, quick, Pull of Soap. Stop that what? guy! Hey, I gotta hide the diamond quick. Where? <laughs> oh! <laughs> this is a tough one, Head. I don't know if we can get out of this. Nonsense, buddy. Remember when you played for the Lakers? Are you saying what I think you're saying? Yes. You were the greatest dribbler in the league. You could dribble past anybody. Ed, that's too dangerous. Go for it. No way. Damn it. Partner, just do it. All right, come on. <laughs> Get those guys. Woo! You did it, partner. You did it. We did it, Head. Remember. We're a team. Hey, 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 easy, the diamond. This has been another episode of The Head Detective. Well, in case you're wondering, we just keep growing them in the Lane family. This is like in case the show's on air for another 10 years. And he'll be joining the cast next. This is my nephew, Yeah! Damien, so. I, have, I have him in comedy prep school now, so he should be ready. Well, thanks for joining us. Hope you had a good time. We had a good time doing it for you. We'll see you next week. Peace.
this fall on Fox. It's Kung Fu Master 91. The adventure continues. Grasshopper, when you can grab this pebble from my hand, it will be time for you to leave. <laughs> Sorry, not this time. Oh, come on, ancient master. It's been almost 20 years. I gotta get out of here. Hey, I have an idea. Why don't we just say I grabbed it? We don't have to tell anybody. It'd be my little secret. I cannot do that. Remember, as it is written, life is a mystery. Everyone must stand alone. I hear you call my name, and it feels like home. <laughs> Just like a prayer. In other words, you don't graduate until you grab this pebble. All right. Wow, look over there. It's Julia Roberts and Jason Patrick. Where? <laughs> Nice try. Now, let Aikido have his turn. Good luck. <laughs> Are you still on pebble grabbing? Damn. What's it, Compton? Stop. <laughs> Congratulations, Aikido. You are now ready to move on. All right, what do you want? 100, 200? Lakers season tickets? Front row! I'm sorry, Grasshopper. But as it is written in the ancient scroll, it's it, and that's that. <laughs> okay. I didn't want it to come to this. Give me the stone! Wait down! Woo! I got it! <laughs> Remember, somewhere between love and madness lies obsession. Yes! Yes, Master! I understand now! I'm ready! Master? Master? Oh, God. Oh, my God! Adventures of Kung Fu Master 91. Sharpton, the regular manager of the baseball team, is sick today, and the owner wants you to fill in. 
And it's important that you become familiar with all the players' names, especially since some of them are a little strange. Oh, I'm done. That's right, I'm down at six, so you'll be taking his place. Say what? Say what's over in right field. So who's on first? No Jews on first. Says who? The owner, Whitey. Whitey's on the team? That's right. With Jews on first, the man on second, Mr. Charlie is shortstop, and it's a conspiracy at third. Now, wait a minute. Who's at shortstop? Mr. Charlie. But now, isn't that a conspiracy? No, a conspiracy's at third. So then who's at first? No, Jews on first. Preach on. Preach on his pitch. Say what, my brother? Say what's right feel, my brother is catching. So, now, my brother's catching, right on. So where's a conspiracy? Preach on. No, right on is in left field. A conspiracy's at third, and my brother is catching. Preach on. Preach on. That's right, preach on. Amen. It's playing center field. Say what? In right field. Says who? Whitey. Preach on. Preach on is pitching to my brother. So, uh, Jews on first. I'm down. I thought you said he was old manager. No, I'm just saying I'm down. I'm down what? Is that first? No, Jews on first. So, Jews on first. The man is at second, Mr. Charlie is a shortstop, and then it's a conspiracy. Amen, my brother. Center field and catch. Say what? Amen and right on. Now that takes care of the outfield. Right on and amen. So where is the conspiracy? Between my brother and the man. According to who? Whitey and Jews. See, this is all the work of Whitey's and Jews. Now, I understand Whitey's, but why the Jews? Because Jews is also captain. Over my brother? Right on. And amen and preach on, my brother. This is more confusing than the Tawada Brawler trial. <laughs> this Rolex. Well, I suppose I do have a few baubles, a few trinkets, a few shiny souvenirs that may seem meaningless to you, but have brought a handful of happiness to this lonely heart. Hey, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. This ain't one of them totally hidden video things or nothing like that. Oh, Johnny, I remember the day he left us, oh, it was yesterday. He stood right at that door and he said to me, Velma, I'm going out for a dozen roses, a pack of cigarettes, and a quart of gin. Then he slipped me five bucks and told me to buy myself something pretty. I've been waiting here ever since. You don't have that five dollars with you, do you? Oh, take it all. Don't you see? Nothing means anything to me but Johnny. Oh, I miss him so. Oh, Johnny. Oh, oh Johnny. Oh, Johnny. Oh, Johnny. Oh, Johnny. Oh, Johnny. I'm Oprah, girl. Let it out, girl. Call her, you say. Oh, Johnny. Oh, Johnny. Oh, Johnny. Oh, Johnny. I'll just get my wrap and be back in two shakes of a lamb's hey, tail. Hey, look, hey, look, hold on, hold on, sweetie, look, look. I'm gonna run get some roses and some cigarettes and a quart of gin, and I'll be right back for you, all right? All right, kid. You don't have to spell it out for me. I wasn't born yesterday, you know. <laughs> hey, 
Here's five dollars. Go get you some. That's right, kid. Go on without me. It's better that way. I'll only slow you down. Give a message to Johnny for me. Tell him I love him. Tell him I'll wait right here. I'd wait a thousand years. Johnny. I'd wait forever for you. Now, let me get this straight. You're looking for someone called the gibberish killer, who leaves nonsensical notes on his victim's bodies. That's correct, which is why I need to speak to the doctor immediately. He could give me a psychological profile of this net so we can catch him before he murders again. <laughs> oh, my darling Miss Starling. Let me first say this man is very dangerous. If you're not careful, he could psychologically destroy you. My four years at the academy weren't exactly a charm school, Doctor. I think I can handle him. Well, here we are. Miss Starling, meet Oswald Bates. I'll just leave you two alone to get better acquainted. Mr. Bates, my name is Special Agent Clary Starling. I'd like to ask you a few questions, sir. I said I need your help, Mr. Bates. I can specify your Kunta Kinte from here. And if you're referring to my cologne, sir, it's called Obsession, something I'm sure you're not unfamiliar with. Ah, Duché, or should I say Summer's Eve? Your psychological games won't work with me, Doctor. I'm immune. Ovulate. Right. I'd like you to take a look at this and see if you can make anything out of it. I will petobismalize and Betty Crocolize any spermation of my smegmatic taxicab. Excuse me, maxi pad. The man is sick. I realize that, sir. That's why I need your help. Where is he going to strike next? First, proctologize yourself in his Rico Suavematic gyrations. Okay. Okay, yes. Yeah, so no, I'm sorry. You're going to have to give me more than that. Kleenex. You're not constipating. <laughs> Imogene coquilized the slaughter of the Labada. Of course. Albuquerque. That would be in line with his fascination for polysyllabic non sequiturs. Exact city. And now you must spew your liquids for me. Well, let me put it to you this way, Dr. Uh, the testicularity of the atmosphere, um, excuse me, pap smear is not juicified to the, uh, oh, what's the word? Deflication. Yes, deflication of your circumcision. That, that's all I can do.
Man, what you doing, man? Flame? Flame, are you okay? Hey, I'm all right. What's up with you? What's, what's these funny clothes about, man? Let's finish the show. Finish the show. Okay. Finally, we come to that sly fox of the network and their show married with children. Loved hated it. it. What you talking about hated it, man? That girl is fine. The blonde one with the, the blonde look like she hiding two midgets, man. Blonde? Midget? Oh! Access Channel 96 presents Men on Film. Hello, I'm Blaine Edwards. And I'm Antoine Merriweather. And welcome, and welcome to, Men to Men on, on Films. Films. The show that looks at movies from a guy's point of view. Uh, you mean from a male point of view? Yeah, males of guys. Guy's point of view. Huh. <laughs> we have a new sponsor. Gatorade. It's for that deep down body thirst. Now packed to the brim with natural protein. Mm. Tonight we're gonna look at summer blockbusters. Our first film up is City Slickers. Oh, this is a film about little Billy Crystal who finds the real man inside of him by going west and putting on some of those leather chaps and joining in a cattle drive. I love this film. All that dust and perspiration. I got saddle sore just watching it. You wanna see? No. Um, <laughs> I didn't really pay much attention because once they started with the cows and stuff, I just got into my girl. I had this young lady with me. We was like macking it out and stuff. <laughs> Everybody got what they wanted. Billy even got to take home that little calf, Norman. Yeah, I bet they had veal chops that night. <laughs> veal, they killed the burgers. Oh, just hush. I could just spank you with a cat of nine tails. <laughs> oh, look. There goes Charo. Where? Keep looking. Where? Keep looking. Where? Hello in there. I'm sorry. Don't do that again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought there was a stink bug on your head. I'm warning you, Tony. Don't do that again, man. The next film up is Kevin Costner's action-adventure flick, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. I felt this film went off the track when cute little Kevin Costner went to save that screwball, Maid Marian. Uh, the real story was in the dank, dark, moist, moss-strewn thickets of Sherwood Forest. Did these merry men sleep together, play together, bathe together, dry their throbbing muscles off together? Inquiring minds would like to know. And a tip to the producers, when you release the video, let us see more of little Kevin's flamey arrow. Por favor. You wouldn't happen to be... Nah. Let's say it. <laughs> You're wrong. That's what it is. You wouldn't happen to be wrong. I think Maid Marian was fine. And... Tony, don't get mad, man. We... Ah. Ow! <laughs> Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Next up, Truth or Dare. Oh, Madonna's tour documentary. My quaff for vu, Madonna. <laughs> I loved this one. I could have spent all night watching those fabulously interesting dancers. Whether to point your toe. Don't point your toe. Who knows? I haven't had that much fun since the opening of Paris is Burning. And that little Oliver. You know the Negroid with the blonde hair? Oh. He was riveting. He was riveting. But there's one thing. Excuse me? Why don't you just cut free Oliver and admit who you are? Oliver, I dare you. Tell the truth, Esperdad. What's Esperdad? That's Spanish for isn't it the truth? You know I'm bi. Lingua. Uh. Much, but I think Madonna is pretty hot, and um, 
I don't know. I could forget Truth or Dare. I went and see her play spin the bottle. You see the way she wrapped her lips around that bottle, man? Yo, she can pop my bottle anytime. Hello in there. That's it, man. I'm gonna bust your ass. Oh, wait a minute. I thought there was a daddy long legs on your head. Excuse me. That's it, man. You want a piece of me? Come on, go for it. Give me your best shot. Give me your best shot. Come on. today. Let's get started. Justice Thomas, take your seat, please. Ah, uh, sure. Just call me Clarence. Just making sure everybody had a hot cup of coffee. <laughs> Just want to make sure everyone's happy. You know me, nothing wrong with kissing a little butt. <laughs> Thank you, Justice. Okay, our first case is the state of Washington versus Kareem Johnson. Discrimination. Nay. Nay? Uh, double nay. Don't you even want to discuss the case, Justice Thomas? Oh, come on. The guy's a whiner. You let one black guy complain about discrimination, and the next thing you know, you have the <laughs> state of Washington versus cool in the gang. <laughs> let him get a job the old-fashioned way. Let him earn it. Uh, you want another brand muffin? I could use some more coffee, Clarence. Sure thing. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the case of Springfield Police Department versus Hector Rodriguez Gonzalez. Justice Thomas. Uh, I mean... Uh... Well, uh, how are uh, the rest of you guys going to vote? I'm voting for the police department. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, the police department. I mean, come on. They fired four warning shots. Unfortunately, three of them hit the guy. But hey, <laughs> if you're going to jaywalk in front of Winchell's, don't come crying to us. I say uh, whatever the rest of you guys say. Justice Thomas, I realize this is your first day, but you've got to relax. Take it easy. You're going to be here for the rest of your life. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Um, I have this job for the rest of my life. <laughs> You're just like Daryl Gates. They can't get rid of you. So, so, so. <laughs> so let me get this straight. No matter what I do, no matter who I piss off, I'm here to stay. More or less, yes. Oh, man. Justice Thomas! I'd love a refill on my coffee. Yo, man, you better get out of my face. This ain't no damn Dennis. Get it yourself. Excuse me, baby. 
Now let's get back to this case involving my main man, Rodriguez. Now this is clearly a case of police brutality. Five minutes ago, you were against him. Yeah, well, five minutes ago, I was a black judge appointed by Bobo, the white president. Well, what are you now? I'm your darkest nightmare. A black judge with a powerful hung jury. <laughs> Call me Mr. Thomas. Complete outrage. We are military law. You have betrayed everyone who worked to put you on this court. Look here, man. I don't know what you said, but I am awfully sorry. I guess you thought you knew Clarence Thomas. I bet you're all sitting here right now saying to yourselves, who's the black Supreme Court judge who's a rights machine for the brothers? Thomas! Where's Thomas? <laughs> they say this cat Thomas is a bad mother. Shut your mouth! But I'm just talking about Clarence! <laughs> He's a complicated man and nobody understands him but his woman. Court of judge! south of the border. He is a grumpy, spectacular, muchacho rocketeer. Come on, the summer rocketeer is everywhere. And look for your El Muchacho rocketeer glasses and mugs at your participating Taco Bell and Bell Taco. for it. 
Lying at bed at night, those cold sheets rubbing against your soft, hot, prepubescent flesh. Oh, you can't fool the math man, baby. I know you're just a one-woman welcome wagon for the incoming freshman. What's this? Why don't you take a hike, you little trollop? Now, how many times have I told you about fraternizing between classes, Hardison? What the hell is this? Geez, Mr. McAfee, those are crib notes for my math class. Yeah, I'll be the judge of this. The uh, input of the square root into y, the angle of the hypotenuse is equal to... Why, this is smart, mister. <laughs> I'll never figure out that problem. Yeah, well, this is the kind of problem you should be trying to figure out on your wedding night. Four eyes. You want everything. Yeah, well, maybe I better give you Mr. McAfee's yes. speech on promiscuity. When you think with your crotch, you're going to end up crotchety. Now, just remember that one of those nights when you got a party in your pants. Get out of here. <laughs> is what I like to see. Couple young, spirited bucks getting ready to play one of your boyish pranks. Young bucks, my middle name, Mr. McAfee. Oh, I know what you're doing. Heck, I used to love to do a little bit of that myself when I was a lad. You're gonna fill them up with water, take them on the roof, throw them off, huh, boys? Where we was going to the roof. <laughs> take as many as you like. Go ahead, boys. Have a good time. Oh, you're kind of firm. You've been working out, son? Thank you, Mr. McAfee. Bye-bye now. Oh, stop right there, princess. Back off, McAfee. You know, the combination of L. Macalicious McAfee and fine American latex can be quite intoxicating. <laughs> what do you say we take a couple of these babies out and see what they can do? Kind of push the envelope. You know, I got a bottle of baby oil in my locker. I wouldn't be in the room with you and one of those things if I could watch you pull it over your big head and suffocate. <laughs> this, huh, baby? The old bum hip. Well, let me tell you something. When a man loses the use of one of his appendages, all the others work that much harder. You know, they used to call me lizard tongue. You didn't know that, did you? Oh, she wants me. Excuse me, young lady, what seems to be the problem? Don't you want any prophylactics, honey? Gee, Mr. McAfee, I don't really have any use for them. Yeah, I understand. I guess you just aren't having much luck with the boys, huh, honey? Well, I tell you what, there's your problem, little lady. You're out of shape. A few hundred sit-ups in the morning will burn that beer belly right off. You know, I think it's time you heard Mr. McAfee's speech on courtship. Boys don't make passes at girls with fat asses. Now take a listen. Hey, McAfee, man, you know, I really dig what you're doing with this condom thing. Well, thanks, son. You got quite a hell of a grip there. Yeah, man, because, you know, a lot of teachers, man, they make us feel weird about this kind of stuff. But, see, you cool, man. You down with the brothers. <laughs> thanks a lot, my boy. Yeah, I think when the kids need somebody to talk to, they know they can always turn to me. Al McAfee. Uh, all right, carry on, kids. <laughs> I kissed a girl. It was in the back seat of my dad's old Impala. Yeah, man, making out in your old man's car. My dad had a Volkswagen. I couldn't do much of anything in the back seat of that thing. The first time I did it, I was in a little red Corvette with Sheena Easton and Vanity. Or was that Morris? What <laughs> out, man? The craziest thing I ever did was break up with my high school sweetheart. <laughs> Man, when it comes to women, we're always doing something crazy. I know what you mean. One time, I poured chocolate all over Sheila. And... Oh, is that Morris? <laughs> Butt out, man. And you really want to turn a girl on? Put on some Luther Van Draw. Oh, man, that works with some girls. But the guy who really gets them going is Rick James. You're both wrong. 
Whenever I want a woman to get wild, all I have to do is... Bet your bottom dollar Ooh. That I can make you feel all right And if I make you holler Prince. They're everything they're cracked up to be. Salima! Salima, your girl! I see you walking past my booth, Miss Thing. You better come on over here and get some Miss Benito's gumbo. Salima! Hey! I'm glad you could make it. We don't get to have too many carnivals here in the projects because they can't always get the metal detectors. But when they do, you know Miss Benito's gonna be here with my famous gumbo, honey, because everybody love my gumbo. Oh, look, there go Cleetha Watkins. She the one to organize the whole thing. Cleetha! Cleetha! Oh, that girl's deaf as the day is long. <laughs> Ain't been right since that girl on her and set fire inside her head. <laughs> Cleetha! Cleetha! Oh, girl, what's that I see in your finger? <laughs> Don't tell me Tyrone finally proposed to you. Oh, girl, I'm so happy for you now. It's your turn to wait in line at the Justice of Peace. <laughs> to be waiting in line at the free clinic. <laughs> Damn Tramp had more men in her jeans than Calvin Klein. And I ain't want to gossip, so you ain't heard it from me. No, you have. Oh, look at it. It goes Luther. Luther Evans. Luther! Luther! You looking for your little Thelma? She's sitting right over there with the youth group all by herself. Yeah, that girl know better than mess with them trifling boys. <laughs> more like them boys know better than mess with her. <laughs> Girl so ugly, her mama had to get drunk just to breastfeed her. <laughs> hair all patchy, hair all patchy like some crow's been picking at it. And with that lazy eye, you can't tell if she's looking at your head or your feet. <laughs> and you let her keep eating them scooter pies. Already take the girl three days to reach around and scratch her own ass. <laughs> but I ain't one to gossip, so you ain't heard it from me. No, you haven't. Oh, look, look, there go, Loretta. Loretta! Gentlemen, Shakespeare in the Park is proud to present Romeo and Juliet. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks? It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. <laughs> oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? Shall I hear more, or shall I speak at this? Hey! <laughs> hey, what's going on? <laughs> what's all this racking about? 
Can a man use the bathroom in privacy? <laughs> you know, these leaves ain't too good for the skin. <laughs> got thorns in it. Just keep going. Improvise. Improvise. Uh, oh. It, hark! I see thou hast brought forth a friend. Hark! I see thou hast brought forth two friends. <laughs> if you bend any lower, I'm gonna revert back to childhood. <laughs> Get off the stage. This is a play, you idiot. Oh, well, y'all in luck, because I just happen to be an actor. <laughs> But what soft wind breaks through yonder buttocks? <laughs> it is I, the aroma from Verona, or maybe those Vienna sausages I have. <laughs> Go away. My bounty is as boundless as the sea. My love is deep the more I give to thee. Well, I can't see your bounty from here. <laughs> But if it's anything like that cleavage, I'm in love. Juliet, I know not this man, nor do I understand of what he speaks. Oh, oh well, maybe I should speak more Shakespearean then. To pee or not to pee? <laughs> that is the question. Oops, there's the answer. <laughs> Get thee to a nunnery. Hamlet, 1613. Oh, well, kiss my black ass. <laughs> Richard Pryor, 1978. That's it. This is balderdash. I just cannot work like this. I swear to God, I could just wrangle you. <laughs> I bet you prefer to choke my chicken. <laughs> shall be played by one, Anton Jackson. Excuse me, let me get in the costume. <laughs> Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me a dollar. <laughs> Romeo, Romeo, up here, Romeo. <laughs> oh, Juliet, Juliet, you are the queen of my heart, the flower of my garden. The booger in my eye. Ah, uh -huh. <laughs> oh, sir, this is one true you shall not tame. <laughs> Parting is such sweet sorrow. Yeah, you better part, bitch. <laughs>
the Reverend Jesse Jackson. As children, many of us learned to read through the collection of Dr. Seuss books. Stories like The Cat in the Hat, Horton Hears a Who, Hop on Pop, Green Eggs and Ham, and How the Grinch Stole Christmas. They were all fine for little white children. But the young black inner city child has never had a book upon which he could look and find someone of his kind. Lot of D, lot of doll, lot of D, lot of doll. <laughs> that is why I'm offering these Jesse Jackson's children's books. For just $49.95, you'll get stories from the street. Stories like Horton Here's a Hole. <laughs> I know there's a hole who's down there. And what's more, I'm sure there's two, or three, or even four. A whole family of hoes that hold to survive. Don't be like a hoe, keep hope alive. <laughs> Your children will have hours of fun as they learn important stories about life. Other books in the collection are The Crackhead and the Hat, <laughs> The Grinch Who Stole My Stereo, <laughs> Hot on Cop, and my personal favorite, Green Eggs and the Government Cheese. I will not eat green eggs and government cheese. I will not eat it because it makes me wheeze. I will not eat green eggs and government cheese because it keeps me from going to the toilet with ease. To order Jesse Jackson's children's books, send $49.95 to Horton Hills of Home, P.O. Box 479-999, Chicago, Illinois, 60201. Order now. service matches up. Family ever. 
Don't ever say that around here. We the hardest working family and don't be selling no fruit to my customers. Sure, I sell the fruit. It's a thick country. It's a free sidewalk. Free Nasa Mandara. <laughs> he already free, man. See, it's all working out the great. <laughs> my baby maker, Hilda. Hilda, get out of here, woman. Hey, man. <laughs> what you be calling me out the for, God free? You know, I got many, many things to be doing. I got to be the waitress, his mistress, the hostess with the mostest, the maid of deed, I serve the tea, and look at me, I'm heavy deed. <laughs> And look here, we got a man over there selling fruit to our customers. Too bad for you, smoky head, hemp talking rasta people. <laughs> one sell a vegetable, dairy product, to small electrical appliance, uh, and novelty item. Got the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle t shirt. <laughs> Watch it twice, you got the Mutant Turtle hand puppet. Good deal at the most price. One family also have one dollar battery pack. Look at that, man. That's a cheap battery, one lasts a half hour. Half hour too long to listen to music. Time to get back to work. Hello. Good to see you. It's a nice day to buy flour at the lowest price, no? Hold on, all right, dear, now. I'm gonna tell you something. They had me sell the freshest flowers at the lowest price around here. We sell day old flour. Who buys flour? We sell three day old flour, two dollar for a bunch. I got. We call the flour. Two bunch dollar. Uh-huh. We got you there. Every customer leave our restaurant with a basket of old dead dry leaves. Absolutely free. Look, Yoko Ono, I don't want your flowers. All I want is some coffee to go. Sell a hot steaming cup of coffee, 50 cents. Here, get this man a, a, a fresh cup of the finest Jamaican bean. Only 48 cents. Best the coffee in the world come directly from my brother. Who that? He won one you haven't met. Juan Valdez. <laughs> Money went a long way for a joke, don't you think? I think you think so, man. Well, this family here are not going to be outworked by that family. Nobody outworked ahead. If they're going to be open 24 hours, we're going to open 25. Now how are you going to do that, man? I don't know, but we're going to work on it. Yeah, yeah man. Got to get, get to work. work. Join us again for another episode of Hill Mind with the Henleys, the second hardest working family in America. But it's too expensive. I mean, we can have a real good time in Inglewood. Inglewood? Yeah, you know, because all we're going to be doing is. Wow. You know... Did I hear someone say knocking boots? <laughs> Got a honeymoon suite with your name on it, my brother. And the price is recite because budget vacations are us. Let me do a quick intro. My name's Clavel, and I'm Howard Tibbs III. And we are. Funky Finger, Finger Productions. Productions. Bring you a little something to make you go, hmm. You know Arsenio stole that from me. Say what? Damn Skippy. <laughs> now, I know Billy Crystal did that little home on the range, city slicker kind of thing. Is Billy in town? Because you know he has <laughs> What? Look, um, I don't want to spend my honeymoon with some cows. Yeah, man, we ain't interested. Well, well, Nelly, partner. You don't have to be interested, brother. All you have to do is just buy. Now, for the nominal fee of a rum... Uh, sixty-two ninety-five. You and the lovely bride debt can spend two fun-filled days at Round Rump Ranch. <laughs> <laughs> now look here, home cook it. That price includes a cabin right on the shores of Booty Bay. Booty Bay? Isn't that a landfill? Well, it may stink all to be damned, but the scenery's smoking. <laughs> Let's go. All right. Uh-oh, Howie, look like they're trying to hit the old dusty trail. I better pull out the heavy ammo. Just give them a taste. Got to pay for the rest. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> now, I promised Delroy and them from the Gap Band that I thank them for the use of the thread. Charlie, too. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. Man, just yell at you. Well, you know, we just scallywagging and lollygagging. Here we go. Axione. <laughs> Put the quarter in, homie. Now, why, why, why? Hey, what a vacation be right on. Uh oh, I see we got some buffalo. Oh, shut them up, the buffalo. Oh, and a little Philly, too. Oh, shut time to rope. 
like their engagement done throw the heel. Well, let's at least give you a brochure. You know I'm fresh out. Howard, coming out the gate, Clevy. Light him, cowboy. Here he comes. <laughs> I'm cool, man. Bam! Hey, man, that's a blank piece of paper. Man, why don't you just chill? That's where we're gonna put the pictures when we get them back from the photo, man. Uh, let's get out of here. You know, honey, Inglewood sounds real hey, good. Say, hey, hey, man, I'm gonna bust a check in your way. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, didn't he say Inglewood? Yeah. Yeah, don't we have a two-day thing going with my cousin Boudreaux? Yeah, I remember that. Don't our senior all look like that dude? What's his name? Uh, uh Meshach Taylor, but with much more booty. non-stick formula. <laughs> well, think I'll give this little tug a lucky loo. Check for safety violations. Oh, oh, but Phil, it's our vacation. Baby, disaster has a real good travel engine. <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, uh, Phil, have you got a light? Coming right up, hot stuff. Barbie, baby. <laughs> Say there, son. Did you know that deep sea fishing is the number one cause of cruise ship casualties? Let me show you something. Let's just say there's a shark warning, and you've just taken a bath in a bucket full of fish guts. <laughs> a typhoon hits a boat. You're knocked over the side. Before you know it, feeding frenzy! <laughs> Fire Marshal Bill, it's a great wine. So it is! <laughs> you got it, Fire Marshal Bill? Cheer up, son. We got ourselves a trophy fish. <laughs> Are you fooling? Hold this, lady. My body is completely numb. I haven't felt pain since I stopped that lava flow at Mount Penatubo. Oh, my face! Excuse me, son. There, Grandma. <laughs> just what the heck do you think you're doing? Oh, I'm just having a drink. Well, you better be extra careful. Drinking on the deck of a cruise ship can be fun, but it can also be very, very <laughs> deadly. <laughs> Say you've got your pina colada in one. And a beaker full of hydrochloric acid in the other. <laughs> you're strolling on the upper deck. Somebody says, hey, look, Captain Stilvix, puke it over the side. You forget which is which. singing with Domingo. Thank you, Fire Marshal Bill. Well, you never can be too careful, man. Why don't you stick around for my next demonstration? Attention! Attention! Can I have your attention? <laughs> this net safety tip could prevent imminent disaster. 
Now, just for the sake of argument, let's say they saved Hitler's brain. And he's messed around a plot to blow this ship to kingdom come. You're having a birthday party on the boat. One of Hitler's Nazi bakers hands you a birthday cake made out of plastic and stuff. Quick, into the lifeboats, the ship's gonna blow! Everybody remain calm. I am a fire marshal. First, you extinguish the Jews like so. <laughs> then you merely dispose of your explosive little friend in the nearest trash receptacle. It's not a trash receptacle. Okay, smart guy. <laughs> Where does it lead to, then? In the engine room. Oops. I think I'm just wasting my breath. <laughs> Look, a ship. We're saved. Hold that right there, son. Is that a flare gun you got there? <laughs> These things can be extremely dangerous. Especially in a lifeboat filled with gasoline. Ashley? Got you, Bill. <laughs> Let me show you something. <laughs> Strong Allen, put your hands together for leaders of the new school singing teachers, teachers, peace.